Hey guys, my name is Dominic Flux. I'm a custom jewelry designer and today I am very excited because we are going to be doing a deep dive on everything that you need to know about appraisals. So appraising your engagement ring, appraising your jewelry or gemstones. And I have here today Louise Van Kolen. She is a certified FGA gemologist and not only FGA, she's also approved for appraisals, which is very important and we're going to touch on in a second. So thanks for watching and let's jump, jump into it. All right, so we're gonna start with the basics. What is an appraisal? What is evaluated when you're doing an appraisal? And kind of like, why is it important? Okay, so an appraisal is, well, I have jeweler and private customers mm -hmm. coming to see me to do appraisal for jewelry. It could be for jewelry, for a loose stone. Uh, and in the appraisal, we have like a first portion to identify the gem. Mm -hmm. So is it a real diamond? Is it a natural stone? And then we're going to have like to uh, calculate the value of it. So this is the appraisal part, the value. And we can give like different value for uh, a jewelry. It could be like the mm -hmm. replacement value. So this is the highest value that we can have. And it call, could also be like the liquidation value, so mm -hmm. the lowest value. So we work for, uh, let's say, uh, succession, succession. Okay, when like you heirloom in, jewelry? Yes, okay. uh, heirloom. So when you inherit like a, a piece of jewelry from your grandma mm -hmm. or your mom, what are we going to do with it? What's the value of it? And I think it's also very important because like a lot of our clients come to us for like, let's say, engagement rings. First of all, she'll be able to see what the market value is, which is very important. But she's also going to be able to give you certification so that you can ensure it, yes. which is very important, right? For an engagement ring, I think a lot of the times most jewelers by default will not ensure the center stone. That is for you to do it. So in her giving you the actual market value of it, you're going to be able to take that to your insurance and insure it for the full amount. Yes. Super important, especially, you know, if that stone pops out, they'll be able to replace it for you. Like anytime you're buying something of a certain value, you want to have it appraised by a third party because yes. they'll be able to verify that it is what it is. Just like we were just talking about her being an appraisal certified gemologist. Would you like to touch on the difference between that? Yeah. And so you can be, so when you do, when you are a gemologist, it's like you graduate from like a, a school that's going to teach you how to identify mm -hmm. gemstone. When you're a gemologist, you don't give any value. You just like identify stone. So you can be graduate from FGA, which is a, a diploma like they give in London, mm -hmm. or you can be like a GIA student. And uh, you basically it's come from all around the world. And once you are a gemologist, you can like take different field and work like in more specific environment, mm -hmm. like I did with the appraisal. When you are a certified appraiser, you're learning how to give price based on a project quality, mm -hmm. but also on the different markets. So let's say the market in Montreal won't be the same as the one in Paris. And that brings in a really good question because like for me, for example, all my clients are in the States. So does it matter if the appraisal is done in Montreal and then it's being shipped out? It doesn't matter because I mean, when we look at the jewelry, we have the knowledge of how the jewelry is made. Mm -hmm. And when we look at a stone, no matter what stone it is, all the, the references, books and prices list on those type of stone are in US. Okay, perfect. So, mm -hmm. I mean, the US is kind of the, the US value for the stone. This is like the norm. So okay. that we do it in Montreal or in uh, New York or in Paris, it's going to be like the same value. And Very for cool. the jewelry, yep. it's the workmanship is the same, mm -hmm. which is going to have to adapt the margin depending on the, the country. Mm, very cool, very cool. And talking about, let's say, heirloom jewelry, what are, or kind of like any jewelry, what would you say are the main key ingredients that you are evaluating? Well, we'll have to take in consideration is there like a, a jeweler, a specific well-known jeweler mm -hmm. that did that jewelry? Because if it's an heirloom and the jeweler is well-known, like let's say, in Montreal, back in the time, we had like Lou Goldberg that was doing mm -hmm. like amazing jewelry piece. Today, those pieces, they're just not going to sell for the accumulation value. They're okay. going to go like an auction market. Oh, very nice. So okay. this we have to take in consideration. Then the stone. Mm -hmm. Will it be stone that some jeweler will buy today just for the stone? So this is like a little stuff that we have to look into when we do appraisal for a heirloom. It's usually much more work than it's like for a regular uh, solitaire diamond ring. Okay. Okay. And is it very hard to identify who it came from? Like the authenticity or? Well, 
It depends. Okay. Well, we have like the marks and it's in stamp and the ring. Mm -hmm. This helps, but also the, the making in general, we can see if it's been done with uh, proper care or not. Poor craftsmanship versus good craftsmanship, 100%. So I'd also like to touch on the difference between, let's say, coming to you, mm -hmm. an appraiser, or going to, let's say, like one of these big labs like GIA, or what would you advise a client? Well, if you go to GIA, they're not going to give you an appraisal. They're going to mm -hmm. give you like a quality report. Yeah. So if you have like a, if you inherit like a stone, like a nice sapphire, let's say it was your grandma, you know, it might come from uh, Burma and it's uh, untreated. And so you know that the stone have a value. You're going to send it to GIA to know if it's really what you think it is. Mm -hmm. And then when you have like the quality report for that type of big lab, you can send it to an independent appraiser like me to give it a value. Okay, very interesting. All right, so for the second half of the video, we are actually gonna do a deep dive and we're gonna follow her while she actually appraises. So you can kind of see the in-depth of all the steps that she does take because it is quite of an extensive process uh, evaluating gemstones. So uh, let's jump into it. So for example, today we're gonna to show you how she evaluates this ring. It is a finished piece and it has sapphires and uh, rubies or? It's actually diamond and it, rubies, but okay. this we're gonna to have to check because we cannot assume this is rubies and diamond. We're gonna to have to test. So when I receive a ring and do the appraisal of it, I'll first gonna to have to look into the metal and see if we do like, if we see any uh, marking uh, marks. So let for example, if we look at this ring, we have like a little stem that's stating a eagle head. It means that's 18 karat gold and it's come from Europe. Once we look the type of gold that we have, we got to weight it on a scale to know what's the, the weight of the ring. Once we took all the information on the, the gold, the type of gold, we're going to take all the measurements. So because in case this ring is lost, we're going to have to redo it exactly the same. That's the like the, the purpose of making an appraisal for replacement value. Is it a domed ring? Is it like a tapered shank? What type of stone that we have on it? What type of setting? Is it like grain set? Is it like a channel set? Today, one of the biggest problem of the industry is the lab grown created stone. So it's man-made stone, especially on diamond. That's pretty new on the market. And we see more and more those, of those uh, diamonds that are created. So so when I see colorless stone on a ring, I will have to check if it's natural diamond or lab grown diamond. So first, I'm going to do like a first observation under the microscope. This is like the gemological instrument that we use the most. We'll be able to see if there is like natural inclusion or lab grown inclusion. So usually under the microscope, we're going to look for the identity of the stone, but also we're going to take some measurement. We have like those tiny little uh, ruler that's going to let us know what's the let's say, diameter of the stone. Because when a stone is set into metal, we cannot weight it. So based on dimension, we'll be able to estimate the weight of it. And then let's say if I have 50 stone that measure two millimeters, I'll be able to estimate that every stone weights one one third of a carat let's say so far so good everything looks natural the inclusions look natural but we're gonna double check it the shallow comes diamond tester it's gonna test if you have like a natural or lab grown diamond so this it's a very easy to use a uh, little uh, tool that a very expensive one so we place the ring inside of the little uh, drawer you can see the ring and because the stones are set in gold uh, we're gonna put the jewelry and it's gonna kind of uh, look at the fluorescence of the stone and compare it natural to lab grown so depending on the color that we're gonna observe we can, we'll be able to to check so here this is really like a, a tester for diamonds so do not look at the red stone who are the, the rubies. So we'll look at all the little blue ones and that's actually what we wanna see because a natural diamond will have like a blue reaction under this Sherlock Holmes uh, tester. So all of the diamonds that you can see that are in the middle of this ring are of a blue reaction, could be like a light blue or darker blue. That means it's a natural stone. For example, if we had like a lab grown 
stone. This, this is the difference between natural diamond and all the red and yellow diamonds, they are lab grown. So they don't have like the blue reaction that we are waiting for like in a natural diamond. So this machine, you, you saw how easy it was to use. This is a lifesaver for today's uh, market because we have like a lot of confusion. And the price, the value of lab grown and natural diamond, this is very big difference. So then we're gonna do like some other tests to check for the gemstone. So we already looked at the gold. If it was not stamped, I would have tested it with acid. So I would have on my little stone make a mark of gold and then tested it with some um, acid. So let's say we have like the 18 carat. If the, the acid would have make it disappear the gold line that I draw on my little stone, that means that's it's a lower value of gold. So here I'm not gonna do it because it's stamped. So we usually trust the stamp that we have on the on the jewelry. But we're also gonna have to look at the ruby or sapphire. In this case, it's a pink stone. It could be ruby, but it's a bit too much of a pink, which we're gonna test. And so it's probably more like a pink sapphire than a ruby. We're gonna check if it's um, in this family of gemstone. For that, we're going to use like the refractometers after the, um, the microscope. This is the most useful tools that we have. So we're going to take like a little drop of um, liquid. I'm going to put it up here and we're going to put our stone on the little window that we have here. And here we kind of have like a, a scale of shadows and we're going to have a look at where the shadows stop on the scale. And it's basically measuring how fast the light goes into the stone. And every type of stone going to have like a different reading on this little scale. So here we can see 1.77 which is mean it's a corundum. Corundum, it's the family of ruby and sapphire. To say, is it a ruby or is it a pink sapphire? Because the price will be different. We're gonna look into like a, a color scale and looking at how pink it is, you see there is different variation of pink. So we're gonna look at the brilliance of the stone and try to find the brightest pink that we can have in this color and we're gonna try to match it on our scale. Once we have the color, we'll find the name for it. And because we have, let, let's say here, vivid purplish red in the 7.5 RP tone 5 saturation 14, we're gonna look like in our um, book of color and it's gonna say to us, is it ruby or is it sapphire? In this case, we can say it's ruby because it's been, it's the right color for a ruby. So price will be different. So once we assess all the, let's say the characteristic of this ring, so we have like the metal quality, the stone quality, the, the amount of stone, the care weight, we're gonna calculate the value. So for the diamond, we mostly use the Rappaport price list. It's used everywhere in the world, in China, in New York, in uh, Paris, in Montreal. And we have like all the, the price for small stone. So let's say here we have like two carat of little stone and we're gonna look like in those quality, color and what's the price of the market of today's diamonds. So it could be for small stone, it could be for fancy shaped diamond, bigger one, smaller one. We have like all this information. It's kind of the Bible of <laughs> the gemologist for prices. For color stone, we based our um, information on the gem guide. They also do prices for diamond. They are like, it's a very good uh, fact to have both price list for the diamonds in the Rappaport and in the gem guide. So we can compare different price lists, but they are most well known for the color prices list of, uh, for the gemstone. So let's say if we go in rubies, because that's what we have at the stone and this ring are. So if we're gonna go corundum and ruby, we're gonna look at the quality. So here the color was an excellent color. We had like very few inclusion and the weight is about like 30 points. So 0.30 carat each little stone. So we're gonna look like in the, the weight range and the quality based on the color and the clarity and the cut. And we'll figure it out like a price per carat. Once we have the price, and all the information that we mentioned earlier will be able to assess the value of every 
different part of this ring. That's the process of appraising a jewel. Once it's done, she'll, she's going to send you a very nice kind of like format like this so that you can keep it in your files. Um, I think it's really pretty actually. <laughs> so okay. it's kind of cool. You have like a full picture and like description of everything that's in it. So these generally range about like $150, a little bit less if you're just doing a gemstone. So yeah, reach out if you'd like to have one. Uh, thanks for watching. We do have a lot of short form content on our Instagram if you ever prefer that kind of like shorter method. And I just like to say thank you for your time. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you next time. My name is Ali Flux. Bye. Bye guys.